Hey guys, what's up? It's Derp here. I uh, just wanted to give you guys kind of an update. I know I haven't put up a new video for a month. I was going over the My War series and I just kind of stopped. Um, the reason for that is because I actually don't play New World anymore. I quit about a month or two ago, a month and a half ago, um, and I finally went and uninstalled last night. So the reasoning for that is a lot of things. I wasn't happy with the directions of the latest updates. Um, they kept promising bigger and bigger things and there was just no follow through. And the real nail in the coffin was seeing the player counts drop back under 20,000 again. Um, they're kind of stabilized around that, you know, 15 to 20,000 population again. And what I'm finding when the game gets to that population is that there's a lot of gatekeeping within the community itself. Um, you know, I was in charge of one of, of a larger company in the West Coast. Uh, we were like semi-competitive, not super competitive. We weren't like a top company or anything. Um, but the gatekeeping kind of led to our players being poached and divisions within the community itself. And then, you know, us trying to keep up with the, the top level of competition led to some, you know, infighting and stuff like that. And then after that, after we started losing, losing some wars, um, it just kind of started falling apart. So after that started happening, I stepped down as the governor and I was like, you know what, I'm going to take a little break. And when I came back, I, after like two week break, um, it was basically like I had to join another company. I like, I had to go basically not play with my friends if I wanted to get into any wars, right? Everybody wanted, you have to join our company. You have to submit VODs. I'm fine with submitting VODs and all that stuff. I did that. I did VOD reviews on my own. I reviewed other people's VODs. I ran a company, you know, I did all this stuff, so I'm fine with it. But the amount of gatekeeping that goes on is what I'm against, right? AGS is trying to make all these changes to get people into wars, to get more people into wars. And what ends up happening is that every idea that they have, every step that they take, just leads to more loopholes and more gatekeeping. So now what we're seeing is on the major companies, you know, these people have like four or five accounts. A lot of them bought up old friends and family accounts for cheap. Um, a lot of them are now buying accounts for some going for two hundred, three hundred dollars for you know, or more. I've seen upwards of seven if you have several sets of full bis. Um, and it's just commonplace now. It's basically turned into pay to win and gatekeeping. So, and this is to for the main companies to stay dominant across multiple servers. And until AGS can kind of get a handle on that and make it so wars aren't as important or make a public war mode where you can go play this top level of PVP but without having to be in a company or and make it public to everybody and no, you know, basically no role, like you have a role selection. So if you're a healer, you pick healer. If you're a tank, you pick tank. DPS, you pick DPS. And then it just slots you in, right? If, until they start implementing that kind of mechanic into the game, there's no reason to, in my opinion, there's no reason to play anymore. Um, because I'm going to be forced to play with people I don't like to play with. The The tr amount of trolls and toxicity that goes on in this game is unreal, right? It's like playing League of Legends or um, Fortnite or, you know, you're playing with except these are with usually adults. It's like adults acting like the kids who play play Fortnite. Um, and it's just not fun. And I don't want to be on the same team as those people, you know. And unfortunately, the state of the game is a lot of the people that are still playing 
are the people who are winning, and a lot of the people who are winning are, you know, terminally online trolls. Um, not to, you know, put everybody in that basket, but a lot of these people are like that. Um, there's a few, you know, few. There's actually a lot of good people, a lot of really cool people that are at, at a top level of competition, but the culture of a lot of these uh, communities that are winning a lot and winning regularly, the ones that are left, isn't really that inviting or open or welcoming or fun even. Um, they're competing to troll people. They're competing to a lot of people. A lot of them are actually selling the gold, so it's a business, right? Um, and if you're not doing your part to win and keep these territories, because you could sell gold, you know, gold cap for 200 bucks, right? So if your territory is making $3 million a month, or $3 million a, a pay period, like a week, you know, you're making 600 bucks a week, right? You know, you're making pretty decent money just to play games. And that's if you sell it all, but, you know, you've got to see where the profit lies. But you can make anywhere from, like, you know, 200 to 300 to 600 bucks a week easy from managing a company um, if you're selling the gold. And that's what a lot of these, you know, not a lot, not all of them, but there's a handful of these companies that play at the top level that are doing this. And I just don't agree with that type of behavior. So, and AGS isn't doing anything to fix it. So they're not fixing the toxicity, they're not fixing the gatekeeping, they're not fixing gold selling, they're not fixing account selling, they're not fixing the fact that, you know, one player will have eight accounts across several different servers. Um, and sometimes even like two to three accounts on the same server just so they could get around the war timers. So, and then another thing that I found out is that people are sharing their alternate, like their alt accounts with so say you're you're on green, right? And you have a friend who's on purple that plays at a at a competitive level in New World and you have a war and you don't have enough people and you don't want to rely on randoms, right? Because you want to win and you want to keep your cash cow coming in. So what they're doing is that they'll just say, Hey, uh, Joe over on purple, I know you're badass and we're homies, you wanna jump on my alt and help me defend this territory. And that stuff is happening all the time. And what that does is it's it's keeping the, the war community so insular that there's no way for anybody new to break in. So it's just gate kept so hard. And at this point, the gatekeeping is so established that new people can't even get a foothold. Um, and the same thing is happening in PvE, right, with M10s. You can't get a, a functional M10 group without having BIS sets for every single dungeon and if you want to do multiple roles you're going to need bis sets for everything um and it takes so long to grind that out without purchasing gold that people are just relying on gold on their rmt transferring right and they're buying bis sets um for mutations you know and it's getting to the point where everything is getting it's just becoming pay to win except it's not being done on a platform that AGS controls. It's the same thing as playing Lost Ark, except we're not giving our money to AGS directly, we're giving it to other players. Um, you know, and that's not gonna change with MMOs. That's just part of what MMOs are, in my opinion. You're not gonna get around that. But my thought process personally is that it's on the game developers to design games where RMT, people who are going to do any sort of RMT um, shouldn't have such a massive advantage to where other players are literally keeping people who don't RMT out of the game. Uh, it's what's killing the game. It's what's killing a lot of games right now is that you have a gap. You, write, you have the people who RMT and you have the people who don't. And then if you're not RMTing and you want to grind that gear, it's going to take you 3,000 hours. You know, I have 3,500 hours on my account. That means, I think I did the average of before I stopped playing hardcore, I was playing 8 to 10 hours a day just to manage my company. That's a full-time job, you know? If that's a full-time, uh, that's literally a full-time job. 
and I have, I think I, before I uninstalled, I went through my account, and I think it was something like five near BIS PVP sets um, that are getting wiped away with this next patch for the most part. Um, so that's 3,500 hours worth of work that's just going down the drain. Um, and I don't RMT, I don't want to, I don't participate in that type of market, I'd rather play the game to earn it. But it shouldn't take me 3,500 hours in a year and a half to get to that point. And then uh, still have to rely on somebody I don't know to even get in, to even be able to get into content, right? I have to, I have to, you know, uh, rely, I'm reliant on networking with people that I just genuinely don't want to play the game with to get into content. And I'll be honest, like, it just didn't seem appealing to me. I love doing wars. That's, like, the only reason why I play the game. I did OPRs to do with my with my friends and stuff like that. That was fun. But it's not the same. The wars were my content. Um, and as soon as my company started kind of falling apart and I basically had to, like, go from company to company and be like, hey, you need somebody, you need somebody, you need somebody. And then being reliant on other people to get into wars because my company wasn't there to push and to get into wars every week anymore. It just wasn't worth it. Um, and the people that I would be put on teams with were either non-communicative or they were just trolls and shitting on people for no reason. So it just became unappealing to the point where I, I would just sit there and play and not talk and there was no communication anymore because the people I, were play I was playing with were acting like 12-year-olds. So, yeah, I I uninstalled it. Um, but that's enough of that. You know, you, the gatekeeping and the community is kind of what killed it for me, of the people that are left. Um, there's still a lot of good people that play the game. I still have a lot of friends who play the game, but it's not enough for me. Um, so what am I doing now? My game of choice now is actually Dark and Darker. Um, that game, I started playing the last play playtest and got hooked. Right, so I'm kind of waiting for the next one on the 15th of April or 14th of April, um, and then I'm gonna definitely be doing the early access, and I'm gonna be making a ton of content about Dark and Darker. Um, so that's the game I've been playing. Other than that, I've been occupying my time with other games like roguelikes and like you know RTS games and stuff like that. A few shooters. I jumped onto Modern Warfare for a little bit, playing you know, League, Arams, and stuff like that to occupy all my time, but, um, yeah, the major development is that I've actually gotten back into game design and game development. So, I have been doing game design and game development for a, a little bit on, it's more, like, I used to do, basically, I used to develop modules for uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Um, I wrote a lot of custom modules, I'd post them on the internet, I'd sold some through the D&D websites, um, I was a registered guild master through Wizards of the Coast, I did all that stuff, um, you know, I used to go to local game stores, host game nights and stuff like that, I, um, I did a lot of stuff, I, I hosted games for kids and stuff too back in the day, and I did custom modules then, and I, and then I did the the pre-written stuff, the the sanctioned um, Dungeon Masters Guild stuff as well. But, so I'm used to making content for games, and I've written two books. I'm an author as well, so I got back into my writing. I'm, you know, I have two books that I'm working on. Um, I have two books finished that have been published for a little while now, but then I also have two more books that I'm working on, and another big project is I'm developing my own, what I'm calling a multiplayer online RPG. It's not really an MMO. Kind of is. I have plans for it to be. That's what it's designed to be. Um, but it's not massive in scope and, and scale, right? It's more pared down. It's more refined, I would say, or distilled. I'm taking all of the core gameplay loops and then just shrinking everything down to be more manageable for a solo dev. Um, the networking stuff is going to be the longest and most tedious work 
uh, and it's kind of being a pain in the pain in the ass. But the core gameplay functions I'm keeping pretty simple, and I'm taking a lot of inspiration from games like Ultima Online, Star Wars Galaxies, um, a little bit of New World here. I like the New World combat. So I'm taking the action combat kind of style from New World and incorporating that with the leveling elements and economy elements of Ultima Online and then like the housing from Star Wars Galaxies, except I'm adding like, I want to do guild housing and stuff like that in the future. Um, but, and then I want to have like the, the like a, like the kind of overall theme is going to be a mixture of open world MMO with a lot of emphasis on dungeon crawling. I want it to be almost like a, you know, a Dungeons and Dragons game, um, except in a multiplayer online RPG setting. Um, yeah, there's not a lot I can really say about it. It's action combat, it's multiplayer RPG. Um, it has more of a horizontal progression system there's not a lot of emphasis on grinding everything. Uh, there's going to be classes, but they're going to be kind of thematic with a little bit of bonuses. And then all of the leveling is going to be done through skill progression. And then there's not going to be any class levels. It's all going to be skill progression. There's going to be a system where you can learn and unlearn skills at will. So if you want to use a sword and then later you want to switch to a mace, you learn the sword, get it up. And then later you can unlearn that skill, learn, unlearn your swordsmanship skill, and then learn mace fighting um, or blunt weapon fighting. So you would take bladed weapon fighting, and then you would take unlearn it and learn blunt weapon fighting. Um, but yeah, it's I'm I don't know if it's going to be third person or first person. I'm pretty sure it's going to be third person, like almost over the shoulder, kind of like New World. Uh, maybe not as far back. I want it to be closer, more immersive, um, and I'll have the vision not so floaty. Um, because if you look at like what I'm playing now on screen, the vision just flicks around all over the place and it breaks my immersion. It's very good for high intense action combat, but I want to slow that down a little bit and bring in elements of dark and darker where the combat's not as fast. It's not as, uh, actions per minute. Instead of actions per minute, I want to focus on timing and movement and strategy, and I want to slow things down a little bit. I think that action combat games in general have gotten way too fast paced and started focusing on actions per min minute and cooldown management versus when should you attack, right? Is this person even in range? Is there a penalty? Like if I don't hit this attack, am I going to die? That kind of aspect isn't really in a lot of uh, modern action combat games. We're seeing action combat games move towards this more fast-paced New World style combat. And I just think we need to slow it down a little bit. I found it very... Uh, just very fun to play a slower-paced action combat game like Dark and Darker. And I want to kind of marry the elements between Dark and Darker and New World together to where, you're, you know, it's not as slow as Dark and Darker, but because that's more of an immersion-based extraction game, and I'm not doing that at all. Um, and New World is, you know, high-paced, like super fast-paced action combat, and I don't want to do that either. I don't want it to be so, f f like, floaty and flickering from from position to position. I want it to be a little bit more slow and thought out. Um, and I've been working on that for a few months. Um, I had, I've had this idea for a game for several years, um, and I just never thought it was really possible for any, any solo dev or small team to do it, and I don't have millions of dollars sitting around in the bank to develop it on my own. But then I started messing around with Unreal Engine 5 because I had an idea for a single player game that was a lot less involved didn't really need nearly as much mechanics or code or you know the it was just an easier game to build 
um, especially on Unreal Engine 5. So I started messing around with that game. I started learning uh, the engine a lot more, and once I found out how not really easy, but how well I understood the core functions of Unreal, because uh, I've done a lot of blue like blueprint style visual coding with things like Bubble I/O and other visual coders, um, and visual coding for web development and stuff. And then I do have a enough knowledge of C++ and C# -sharp and and stuff to get myself into trouble and back myself into corners. But I have friends who luckily do that, who do C++ and C# -sharp for a living, and you know, went to school for that and worked for NASA and stuff. So they, you know, have offered to help me out if I ever get really stuck and can't figure it out. Um, and they've been, have, they have a wealth of information for me. But yeah, with their help and the help of a few community members that have been kind of helping me out here and there, it's been actually going along pretty well. Um, I, I've been live streaming some of my level design. Uh, I have a lot of the fundamental locomotion mechanics done, sprint, jump, uh, crouch, dodge, the basic locomotion, um, the interaction system, opening doors, turning off torches, turning off lights, pushing buttons, stuff like that is mostly done. Um, I need to get, I want to get my characters, I'm still using the base UE5 skeleton, and I'm going to use the UE5 skeleton, but I want to get custom uh, characters, and I'm using some marketplace, a lot of marketplace assets that I want to replace if I get any kind of funding. But that kind of leads me to my next point of I've had some interesting things happen where I might if I get my vertical slice out in time and I get things done, I have a possible funding opportunity for my game. So it would actually grow in scope a little bit because I have a lot of, here's the basic core gameplay loop. I want dungeons to feel a specific way. I want an open world with at least one major city that has enough questing for several hours. Um, I want the basic loot systems. I want Obviously, combat is going to be the main focus. I want magic. Um, I want an open world dungeon. I want like a world boss mini event. And then the trading system, so auction house, you know, player trades, guilds, uh, parties, all that stuff I want in the vertical slice. But things like crafting and refining and stuff like that. And then um, the, the player housing and world and uh, guild housing and more cities, more dungeons, all that stuff is going to come. I think one or two dungeons is going to be the most that I put out for the vertical slice. And then once I have the framework all set up, if I do get funding, it would be very easy to expand it to where I go, okay, all the core gameplay functions are already there. So I have these five classes already in the game. I have these th other three classes already gained, like, designed but not implemented I can add those just by copy and pasting and changing the code a little bit and changing the numbers and the titles and the names animations stuff like that I could add that later on I could go through and add new weapons you know because I want to start out with like oh there's three different variations of the one-handed sword there's three different variations of the two-handed sword three different variations of the mace I could go through and add 20 you know because I'll have more money for custom assets and more money for, you know, animators and animations. Because um, right now I'm kind of reliant on my own personal funds and um, a little bit of outside funding, but not much. Um, but once I get more funding, if I do get it, I'd be able to add a lot more stuff. So right now I'm, I'm kind of basically, I'm making the game to what I can afford. What I can afford personally, no outside funding, what I have time to make. I've been spending, you know, like anywhere from f like four to eight hours a day, sometimes 10 hours a day, building this game out every single day, except for like one day a week for the past month and a half, two months. So all the time that I was playing New World has basically gone into this new game. And then in my free time, I've been playing games until Dark and Darker comes out. And then it's back to content. But yeah, if you guys are uh, 
interested in watching some of that devlog content i don't want to i don't want to do full videos you know i don't want to make 15 20 minute to an hour long videos of me putting assets into a level um, or modeling assets unless that's stuff you guys want to watch but i do i do stream that stuff on live stream and i explain what my game's about and what my plans are um but yeah it's a it should be cool i, th I think it's a i think it's going to be fun i think it's going to be a fun game um i just want to do it for me whether nobody plays it or not whatever i'll have made a game and put it out there in the world i think it's cool that's kind of how i approach my writing luckily i've been pretty successful as an author um but I do want to take that same approach of I'm doing this for myself and I'm making it so uh, as my creative outlet versus strictly for a profitable um, venture. You know, I'm going to release it for sale. It does hopefully make some money, but that's not the main main the main focus right now until i get some kind of outside investment or funding um and even then my kind of core principles for making this game is you know no gatekeeping no unnecessary grind no unnecessary roadblocks to quality of life um i don't want pay to win at all you know if it does do uh you know if i do go the free to play model or you know, a low one-time purchase with with no monthly sub, then what I would do is, you know, skins. Um, if I have a battle pass, I don't want the battle pass to be paid, right? I want to have the free tier get as much stuff as I offer, right? Um, I don't want to charge people for housing. I don't want to charge people for extra inventory slots. I don't want to charge people for extra gear sets like new world is doing um all that stuff's going to be included and the monetization will come from skins um cosmetics it'll come from say you buy a house and you want to have your house look a very specific way or if you want to have furniture that looks a specific way it'll be all about uh stuff like that instead of like kind of like like league of legends does it you know you can't pay, really pay to win in League of Legends. It's all skins and chroma skins and it unlocks features that allows you to dye your skins and stuff like that. That's the more of the model that I would follow. I want to follow the Riot model of monetization because so far in all of their games I've never seen pay to win. They over monetize the heck out of their cosmetics and they have the ability to drop a new cosmetic every week. Same thing with Fortnite. Um, I don't really like Fortnite because they're kind of shady about it you don't know always know what you're buying um but as far as that idea and philosophy of like oh here's a weapon skin here's a armor skin here's this and now okay if you pay three dollars you could dye it purple right um or you could customize the way that your skin looks by doing this or this or this i think that's a way more healthy approach to monetization Especially if it's like a free-to-play or one-time purchase. Um, I do, up until very recently, I've really liked New World's method of monetization. Like, if you're going to pay, try to pay to win in the game that I make, like, it's going to be funny. Because the amount, the, the difference between um, in-game crafted gear. So, like, when I do incorporate crafting, if you, find, if you are a Grandmaster Blacksmith and you make a greatsword and you roll on that table to make the best great sword possible through crafting it's going to be like two percent worse than the best possible loot drop right so if you want to sure go grind for like 20 hours to go get that super good great sword but you can also just go buy a gm quality great sword that that your buddy crafted right from or like go find some player vendor and pick up a great sword from there and there you go but yeah, there's some other aspects, like the game focuses on PvP, it's it's PvP focused game. It's partial loot PvP, kind of like Tarkov, except you have, I plan for three, three different types of inventory systems. So you have your gear that's equipped, so sword, shield, your weapons, your armor, all that stuff. That stays on your body when you die. You have a stash that's going to be six to ten slots 
I'm doing a spatial loot system, like a jigsaw loot system, like Dark and Darker, or like Ultima Online. And then I'm having nested bags, and then but you can't put bags in your in your stash. Um, so it's only going to be for small items, high value. So your stacks for gold. Um, so you find gems or whatever, uh, or stuff like that. Resources are going to be single square items that stack. So if you have a stack of ore, you just slap, slap that in your stash and you, you won't drop it when you die. But anything that's in your backpack will drop. So say you're in a dungeon and you get ganked or you know a player attacks you and you end up killing them anything that was in their backpack is going to drop so it's going to or their whole backpack is going to drop on the floor and you can loot whatever you want so say they have say they're in a dungeon and, and they find a sword that's better than the one that they're wearing right now um they equip the sword that they want to wear but that means that they put the sword that they want into the dungeon with in their backpack if that sword was good say it was like a master crafted but they found a sword that's like equivalent to a grandmaster weapon so they put the master crafted sword in their backpack now you can find now you have it because they attacked you and you killed them um which kind of leads me to the dungeon how the dungeons are going to work uh, the dungeons are going to be open in instance with a player cap. So there's going to be anywhere from 10 to 25 people, I think, is the limit I've set, depending on the size of the dungeon, is, are going to be allowed in the dungeons themselves. And the way that it works is if you walk into a dungeon entrance, you get loaded into whatever you or your group um, or get loaded into the dungeon with enough space to hold you, right? It's almost like a uh, non-queued OPR that you could always join. Um, except with a lot more PvE elements, like and bosses and stuff like that. Um, so it's a PvE and PvP game. There's going to be mobs in the dungeons that respawn, kind of how Ultima Online was, right? You used to just walk into a dungeon and there'd be other people there. Uh, it's kind of how EverQuest was. You walk into a dungeon and there was other people there. The major, major difference is these dungeons are going to have PvP on. I mean, they were in UO, but uh, these dungeons are going to have PvP on. There's not going to be any guards except for at the two entrances that go into the city. There's going to be guards near, near there, so if you kill somebody and you turn into a criminal, which I'm going to develop a criminal system. Um, if you're a PvPer and you criminal flag, there are going to be dungeon or guards at the entrances to cities. Um, so you won't be able to get back into the city until your attack runs out. And then if a dungeon only has 10 people in it and a group of three wants to join, they'll just pop into that, that, gr that, that 10 man dungeon until it hits 20 players or 25 players or whatever the max is for that dungeon and then if you know that if the cap is 20 and that 21st person joins it just starts up a new dungeon and then if that dungeon clears out and there's zero people in it that dungeon is then destroyed and it starts a new and then new instances open and close as they fill and empty um but yeah there's a lot of cool stuff that i plan on doing i also plan on doing an interconnected dungeon system which i think is a pretty cool and relatively new idea um, I want you to be able to go directly from one dungeon to the next. So say you're in, like, my first dungeon is the sewers, right? Um, and then connected to that is a um, goblin encampment. And then there's, the, there's also the crypts, the catacombs. Um, so what you'll be able to do is if you go into the sewers and you clear out the whole sewers... The, the goblin encampment and the crypts are going to be slightly more difficult um, than the sewers. So if you want to go directly from the sewers, you cleared out the sewers, and you want to go directly into the skeleton or into the the goblin encampment, there's going to be a tunnel somewhere hidden in the dungeon that leads you directly to the goblins. Or say you're uh, getting chased by a PVPer and you need to run away, you could book it through to the other dungeon. And, get, and ditch them in the other dungeon. 
Or you could try to leave, since you're not a criminal, you can just leave through the front door. And there's guards waiting on the other side, they can't follow you unless they want to get killed by the guards. Or have to deal with attacking the guards. Um, so, but that also means that the PvPer can kill somebody in the sewers and then escape through the goblin caves. Or they could escape through the catacombs. Or they could, and then they could go from the catacombs to the next dungeon, and then the next dungeon, and the next dungeon. And the cool thing I want to do is, so say you start in the sewers, and you work your way, th then you work your way through the goblin encampment, and then you work your way through the orc encampment, and then you work your way through, you know, whatever dungeon is after that. You could pop out. Okay, my bags are full. I have like the best loot that I can get. My tag file, my criminal tag finally went off. Or, you know, I've looted the crap out of these places and I have everything I can hold. Now I need to get the hell out of here before I get killed. You can leave through that dungeon and it's either going to lead you to a PvE, like open world dungeon, or it's going to lead you to a city. So it depends on where you are and it's going to be a completely different city than the one you started in. So say you start in the main, the main city that I'm working on now, you could start, start there and theoretically work your way up over the course of a few hours and end up on the other side of the, the continent. So there's some pretty cool stuff um, that I want to do. So it's going to be like this whole underground network of, ca of dungeons and caves and stuff that almost mirror the world above it, right? So if there's a graveyard with a crypt in it, that crypt is actually going to have a dungeon attached that, and that crypt is also attached to the city. So if you go under into the sewers, you pop out the crypt, and now you're in a PvP zone. So it's pretty cool. That's like a 15 minute walk from the city, right? In game, like a 10 or 15, however many minute walk from the city. But yeah, it's pretty cool. But if you guys wanna learn more, uh, just follow, like, subscribe, um, look for my live streams, and then I'm gonna try to work on getting once the game's in a place that I feel comfortable showing it, I'll make a more in-depth video for my first official devlog. But yeah, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Um, oh, I also started a Patreon. So if you want, if you like what type, the type of game I'm building, um, it would really help. I need assets. I need music. I need uh, sound effects. I need everything. Anything you could think of that goes into building a game, I need it. Um, if you have time and you do any of that stuff, SFX, animation, whatever, and you want to help out and get some credit on the, on the game, um, hit me up. I'm trying to build a, a little team here. So, and then if I do get funding, I'm going to need to hire people. So yeah, hit me up, join my, join my Patreon if you want to help, uh, just shoot me a message, whatever. Hey, you guys have a wonderful day.